Hey, what's up? I'm Guy. I'm John. This is our YouTube channel. Subscribe to this channel. Give this video a like. Check out our podcast below in the description. All right, John. Should the Browns trade Odell Beckham Jr.? Should the 49ers be interested in him? As you know, NFL league source Mike Francesa is the one that started this story back after this. Uh, Benjamin Albright came out and said, this is a non-story. The Browns aren't interested in trading him. Niner fans are like, we want him. A lot of people say we want him. It's a two-parter. plays on Thursday night, obviously. Um, should they trade him? Would the Niners be interested if they did? We've talked about Odell for a few years now. We've liked him at different points more than others. Um, I actually do think they should trade him. Now, what should the Niners do is a different story, but let's start with that. Should the Browns be trying to trade the guy? Uh, I, I would probably wait till week seven or eight, or I mean, right, you know, right up until the trading deadline, see where I'm at. But I, I would, I, you know, I, I think we're starting to learn that Odell Beckham might never be what he once early was in his career. Those first couple of years, he was incredible. Uh, he actually became at one point in time, like probably by year three, more famous than he was talented. And he was really talented, right? Not just the one handed catches, but multiple 90 catch seasons, just an unblock, uncoverable guy. His like his ability, like he could take a slant to the house and his deep speed for being a non like Deshaun Jackson type player was pretty special. But where we're at right now, like I, I think his value is at an all time low guy. So I, I struggle with paying. If you're the Browns, you gave up now it's different management, but still you gave a first round pick, you gave a third round pick and you gave a player you don't want to just give like part of when the Raiders, you know, when the Patriots traded for Randy Moss, they gave the Raiders a fourth round pick. So part of what made acquiring Randy Moss so special for Bill Belichick, he didn't give up very much to get him. Like that's, he paid, you know, $500,000 for $3 million home. It was just, it was incredible. I mean, hell you could argue that first season, it's like an $8 million home. The, The value was just, borderline unprecedented given you were getting a guy that we all knew was a hall of fame talent and had to been a hall of fame player. And Randy Moss was way more accomplished when the Patriots got him, even after a couple shitty years with the Raiders. But I, I I'm out on Odell. I, I really am for a guy that's viewed as a $20 million player, a guy that you got to trade first round picks for like n- not me. Well, but he's a $15 million player, which is part of what makes him attractive, right? Without much dead money. Not that that matters. He's only 27. I do think he's got three years on the deal after this year, right? I, he's going to need a new contract, at least after next season. I would expect he wants one, if not before next season, depending on what this year looks like. Um, you know, reading Kevin Clark had a had a piece in, in The Ringer uh, Wednesday just talking to Andrew Barry, talking about Andrew Barry and just kind of his philosophies. And one thing Andrew Barry said was that the biggest thing for them is supporting the quarterback and uh, – as he said, influ- influencing the passing game. So basically, pass rush, right, DBs and receivers, tight ends, whatever, O-line, but supporting the quarterback, influencing the pass game. The question is just like, how much really are you supporting Baker? Are you getting your bang for your dollar over the course of a season uh, with Odell? See, when you and- say he wants a new contract, guy, he's had basically 75 catches the last two years. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm mm-hmm. just saying, like, I would – I'm just saying I expect him because he's – are you looking at his contract right now? I look at his contract, then I went to his stats. Yeah. 77, 74 catches no, the I know. last two but years. I, like, so his contract to what, is this year and then three more years at $15 million, basically, right? Yeah, I, I, I'm not arguing yeah, what you I, said. I just think it's a little more complicated than when he signed his huge deal to became the highest paid wide receiver ever. That leverage is evaporating. Yeah. No, you're right. I, my point is, I do think if you're acquiring him, on one hand, you go, oh, good, he's under contract for three more years. On the other hand, yeah, but I think he's, I just think you have to expect that he's going to want to do New Deal. Maybe Andrew Barry expects that too. But this is not like, if you're him, you don't need a first and a third back, do you? Just because that's what somebody else gave up. Like, I think this is a guy, he doesn't have his rookie, qu- Baker Mayfield is not his rookie quarterback. Like, we're going to be talking about Baker's fifth year option here pretty soon. Right. Yeah. And if he has any doubt that Baker is the quarterback of the future, then I think that to me would accelerate a decision to move on from Odell. If you think Baker's your franchise quarterback and you feel good about that, then I think you hang on to Odell. Well, but cause he's so cheap. Yeah. Well, the, pr- the problem is, is Eli Manning had a big arm. Wasn't always accurate, but he could throw the ball deep down the field. That's not Baker Mayfield's deal. 
and you see like one of the things Mike Florio wrote an article like it's not a great scheme fit. It's really not. Say what you want about Kirk Cousins. Dig the whole thing that happened with Diggs there. He actually him and Diggs had 15 touchdowns in two years. Kirk Cousins does throw a good deep ball, right? I mean, they, they worked. This thing is not working out, guy. And my issue with the 49ers is from a cap standpoint, they have two players on their team they're going to want to sign. And to me, first and foremost, is their left tackle. He just, anytime you get a star left tackle, who that Kyle knows him, even though they just acquired him, it's not like he's a new piece for Kyle necessarily, because I think there's a comfort level. He clearly likes being here. He's going to be expensive. He's going to be a free agent. The rule that, right, they can't franchise tag him. I think in a perfect world, this season, they find a way to extend him. And we know, and you've talked about, just if you watch Kyle Shanahan's press conferences, Fred Warner might be his favorite player on the team. He is going to get extended. And we know Parag. When I said like that, people w- pushed back and said, no, he loves Jimmy Ward the most, but I go with yeah, Warner. You could, you could argue like Nick Mullen and C.J. Beathard are up there too. But I think he likes defensive the, guys. <laughs> that Fred Warner's getting extended this year. Like $15 million, yeah, the contract isn't that great. It's still a lot of money. They've invested a first-round pick in, in Brandon Ayuk. Now, granted, you know, we haven't seen him play yet. And Debo Samuel, this year we haven't seen him play yet. But those guys are part of the long-term deal where you've invested a lot of assets. I, If you told me you get Odell Beckham for a fourth-round pick, I'd say have at it. But that's yeah. just not the case. Yeah. I I think at worst, you could probably get him for a second-rounder. or I mean, at best, like the cheapest. And I'm, I'm not into giving a second-round pick for this guy. Especially when, to your point, like the Niners are about to get more expensive – which means, A, you have less cap room, but, B, you also just need those picks more because those picks have to become players. And the last two years, like, to me, you don't use your second on Debo and then a first on Brandon Ayuk. I threw my pen at myself. You don't need a, a, a first on Brandon Ayuk if you're about to give up after two weeks or three weeks or four weeks and go for Odell Beckham. Because here's the thing. I, like, we know Debo's a good player if he's healthy. We know that, right? Yes. We, we'll see what – what Brandon Ayuk is. This will be a big week, I guess. It's He's just a rookie, so we'll give it a breath here. But to me, like if seven weeks in you're going, oh, Brandon Ayuk, whiff, we got to we gotta uh, double down on this and go get Odell. Then, like to me, that is, that's a pro- in- yeah, then that's a major problem. And I, I don't think you can arrive at that decision with it. This is not, this is not September in a, in a uh, divisional baseball race where you need a starter for the stretch run. That's, not the position this team is in. I know they want to win a Super Bowl. I know they were in the Super I know all that is part of the goal. But there was a longer view here I think you got to take with this team. They got two – their two best receivers, in theory, right, are a first-year guy and a second-year guy. So just let that they play. They were a second out. and a first-round pick. Right. And the second-round pick was – pick. what was he, like 30 – they were the second pick in the second a round. High second so round 35, pick, yeah. 34. Part of Ayuk – and listen, I'm not saying he's ever going to sniff what Odell was in uh, in New York – those first two or three years, because we all watched it. He was fucking awesome. But they did say over and over, we drafted this guy because we think he's a speed deep threat, right? John Lynch said that. They, Kyle, they talked to Herm. Yep. They think he was way faster. And then all accounts in practice, before he pulled his hamstring, he was crushing it. They drafted him to kind of play that role. You know why? When I was pounding the table, they should trade for Odell before they drafted Nick Bosa. It's like, well, could you trade back and trade some picks for him? They didn't have that guy. And then a year later, in theory, they have that guy and they invested a high pick. You got to live with it. This is part of building a football team. Like to me, Odell Beckham, unless you could get for nothing, which I just don't think is ever going to be the case, because like you said, the, the contract is pretty conducive to teams that want flexibility and he's relatively cheap. I, I, I just think he's not an option for the Niners at this point now. Plus, one thing Kyle Shanahan has been huge on that we've learned is like blocking at wide receiver. That's not really Odell's deal. You know, it's a great point. I actually point. think that he's probably lost juice within the 49ers building. Well, because we talked about this a lot last year, and we talked about it – really, we talked about it after the draft. Kyle has a type. We know what it is. He's made it extraordinarily clear to us what his type is, right? It's physical receivers that throw the – it's that – Ayuk, I know he's a speed guy, but he is a physical guy. He is a – go back and watch our Brandon Ayuk a draft video on YouTube. He was a run-after-the-catch guy. Debo is – not Debo is a physical guy. These are guys that block. These are guys that are not high maintenance, right? And whatever, we could debate how high maintenance Odell is. If he's a 90 catch guy, you don't really care, but that's not what he's been. Yeah. I, I, I think his value is in an all time. So place. how does Howie Roseman get him is really the question. Well, that's, this is when Howie pounces. He'll get him for a fourth. <laughs> yeah. 
this is this is a fourth in a player. Like this is, yeah. th- but this is when good teams get a guy like Odell Beckham because you get him for cheap. Only a dumb team, and I got into an argument with someone on Twitter. Like he's gonna go for a first. A dumb team trades for a first right now. That's just not his value. His his value right now, based on what he's been, based on the injuries, based on the production. Part of why Stephon Diggs went for pick 22, 15 touchdowns two years. 15 touchdowns two years in huge games. Like, all you had to do is throw on films in games. For the last two years, the Vikings win in double-digit games, playing in playoff-level games every other week, right, against yeah. just good teams. Like, it's easy to, like, this works. And there's no question I, he's in his prime still, too. Yeah, no I, I just think there are, there are way more question marks than answers and that's where, like, Randy Moss, same position. He went for a fourth, resurrected his career. I'm not saying that Odell Beckham can't have multiple unreal seasons. It does just feel like whoever gets that out of him, if he is eventually traded, because it does feel like, I'd say 50-50, he might get traded this season. You know, what I want if I'm Andrew Barry is a couple eight catch, nine, you know, 115, two touchdown games for Odell. Well, guy, it's going to have to come against good teams because right now I couldn't give up a good pick with just being like, yeah, it's just basing on what it was in 2016. It's 2020, and not just 2020. It's, I mean, it's, we're, we won't be that far away from October 2000. Like we're a long it's way away from like, yeah. sweet 2015. Like it's, I know, got to get with the times. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Things change. As Kyle Shanahan always says, and I think. I mean, he says it because he stole it from just every NFL coach ever. Ever in football, you're, you're two things: you're either getting better or you're getting worse. And I, from what Odell was, and he was always getting better. He looked special. It, he's gotten worse since. Is it all his fault? I'm not blaming it all on him, but it's some of it is. You know, it just he doesn't seem like the same guy. Now, part of it, it sucks for him. I, one thing that he should have done is refuse to play in Cleveland because that. His career spiraled after that, right? He should have done an NBA thing like, I'm not going to play there. Because one thing that was clear, when the Giants traded him, there would have been good teams interested in trading for him, right? right? Other, he, Niners might have been one of them. Definitely. He, he should have controlled his own destiny saying, just the basic, like, Gronk, I will retire. I won't show I up. I choose and not to run. Just, the Seinfeld. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> 